Hey, good day, fellow deal makers. Welcome to the Deal Scout. On this show, we talk about deals. We we have conversations with deal makers to educate, to learn more about deals, to learn tools of the trades and and things that people are doing, deal makers are doing to increase their their deal flow, to do more deals. I'm going to say deals a lot. All right. So on this, uh, we have a guy who helps a lot of deal makers uh, through the technology leveraging robots. Isn't that right? So Kurt, oh, I'm sorry, I called you Kurt. That's the guy I interviewed yesterday, Rick. Welcome to the show, man. What a great way to start out calling your guest by the wrong name. <laughs> rookie no move. worries. No worries, Josh. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. <laughs> yeah. Well, Rick, you get a hall pass. So if like you call me by the wrong name or something like that, we'll, we'll call it even. So it sounds um, good. Rick, tell, tell us a little bit about who you are, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. My name is Rick Elmore. I'm the owner of a, I, I, would, I guess, a, a software as a service company called Simply Noted. Uh, what we do is help you know, sales and marketing professionals scale and automate sending real handwritten notes. And how we do that is uh, we've built custom handwriting robots um, that are absolutely phenomenal, um, 100% our own technology from the ground up. We actually have six patents pending on these robots, three design, three utility, um, completely self-funded. I'm extremely proud uh, of what this company has done, but also the product that we produce because our clients love it. Um, you know, we, we live in a digital world, you know, everything that we do is on our phones now from social to text messaging, to emails, to Slack, Twitter, um, TikTok, you know, um, where nobody is really paying attention to now a days is the mailbox. So what simply note it does is help you stand out, um, get a 99% open rate, you know, because handwritten envelopes have a 99% open rate and those studies are all over the internet. Um, you know, build those deeper relationships with clients or help you find new clients, um, you know, through being a little bit more personal in your sales and marketing approach. So yeah, that's a little high level overview of what we do. So if I walked into your robot factory, would I see like, you know, the, the Terminator sitting there, you know, with their eyes, like all scribbling notes and such like, you know, that, what? The it does kind of feel like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. We really do have like a little army of uh, writing robots. Um, right now, we currently have 75 uh, robots that are actually in operation. We just put another order in with our engineering company for another 75. Um, the last three and a half years, we've been uh, designing them and like R&D testing them and fine tuning them. So now we're like finally into the scaling part of our business. But yeah, we have 75 pen wielding robots sitting in this warehouse. They hold real ballpoint pens. Um, we've actually even built our own pen. I don't know if this is a video podcast or nice. just audio, but um, yeah, we've gone way into the weeds with the technology here, but we built our own weighted brass pens and our own pen inserts. You know, these pen inserts have 300% more ink. Plus we get to control what ink goes in it, the quality, and then having more ink allows our writing robots to write longer. You know, these machines used to have to be reset once or twice a day because they're just running out of ink so much. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, How do I know, get one of those pens, Rick? Those pens, so I'll for people you just listening in. Yeah, like they're it, pretty awesome. Yeah, it looks like a, I mean, it looks like a 50 cal bullet. Like it's, it's, a, it's, it's awesome looking, <laughs> yeah. it unscrews and has this yeah. huge ink thing. Um, yeah. So you'll, you'll send me one? Awesome, man, thank yeah. you. Um, yeah. Yeah. So if you're just listening into this podcast, you might want to pop over to YouTube real quick. We just started the YouTube channel and, but you'll, you'll be able to see the pen. So this is the pen that robots I'll send you use. a video of the writing robots too. So yeah, you can oh, cool. put that on there as well. Awesome. So you guys will be able to uh, click on the show notes and watch robots in actions and, lo and look at the, the pens that are doing this. Um, so what an interesting concept, right? So I can send you, I've got a couple 20,000 or whatever, you know, like people that I, try to stay in contact with through my podcast shows through LinkedIn mm -hmm. and such like that. So essentially I can like handwrite a message because my handwriting's terrible, Rick. Like I can mm -hmm. handwrite a message and I could kind of like push a button and it gets sent out to all of them. Yeah. I mean, it's, it can be, it's just as fast as sending, as sending an email, as long as you have like all your mailing addresses and like a CSV or an Excel file. Um, it's just like mail merge. So we just plug in variables. So like high first name, you know, for real estate, a lot of our clients are real estate professionals. They'll, reach out to their, you know, sphere or, or network, whatever they call it. And they'll try to do some off market property like findings or say, Hey, we're interested in buying your house. And they'll plug in the first name, the address. So these notes are hyper-personalized, but yeah, everything we do is uh, completely real. Um, 
you know, we, we don't put any branding on these letters or 100% real pen written the way to tell, because a lot of people um, will do like laser printed, you know, you'll kind of see those like renewal by Anderson does that um, big window company, the laser print, like a handwriting font, but how you tell is lick your thumb and try to smear the ink. And if it smears, that's how, you know, if it was written by pen. So, um, you know, it's not for everybody, but you know, for those businesses where you're trying to stand out, um, you know, build those really strong relationships. Um, you know, if you want to enter into some type of marketing flow and automate it through like a Zapier, uh, integration, API integration, some type of web hook, we can automate sending handwritten notes as well. So yeah, it's a pretty cool platform, but the reason this started, you know, I was doing my MBA back in 2017 and I was in medical sales at the time. And, uh, you know, I was in a marketing class and I had a professor who was going over all the success rates in marketing and, uh, everything was super marginal. Email was like single digits or like low double digits. Door knocking was terrible. Cold calls, print mail, print mail was all like super low. And then the marketing professor ended the lecture at like half-heartedly joking saying, Hey guys, like, you know, what still works like more than ever uh, nowadays is a good handwritten note. Um, they're rare. They always get open and people like appreciate them. They cherish them. And I was like, man, that is a no brainer. Cause I was a sales rep. It's like, if I can get in front of my client 99% of the time, this happen, this has to make me more successful. Plus if I can send like a handwritten thank you note to my current clients, None of my competitors or other reps out there are doing that, right? Mm -hmm. But there just was no easy way to do it. So I had a classmate of mine or in my cohort, um, we got to work, um, started looking at technologies in South America, China, worked at the mail house here in, in, uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. And then uh, we started with like a, like a off the shelf solution. It was like a makeshift auto pen but quickly found out that wasn't going to work. But um, yeah, we wrote out 500 letters um, to pr some doctors in my territory that did not work with me at the time. And I just basically like told them who I was, asked them if I can book a lunch, you know, and I had 28 doctors call me back, which was absolutely nuts. Like doctors never called reps. Yeah. And they first said like, Hey Rick, this is cool. Like no, nobody ever has ever sent me a handwritten note. Like, Thanks for sending that. But by the way, let's set up a lunch. Like, yeah, I want to talk to you or learn more about, you know, what I was selling. And I sold $280,000, $20,000 in commission, like, you know, within like 60 days, which was absolutely nuts. Like my, my quota, it was either like 40 or $50,000 a month. So my whole biz, like my whole, my whole company was going nuts. Cause you know, all the numbers get posted every single month. Yeah. And my VP of sales was like, Rick, what are you doing? Like, you got to help every, everybody. Like, like whatever you're doing is working. And I showed him what I was doing. He's like, I wish you wouldn't tell me like this was like your side hustle because like, I wish our whole company could use it. Like he couldn't promote it. But anyways, from that second on, I um, really started developing Simply Noted because I saw it work firsthand, yeah. had that entrepreneurial like seizure moment. You know, any entrepreneurs out there, they know what that is when you have that idea. And it's just that surge of adrenaline excitement yeah. rushes through your body um, and haven't looked back. So fast forward four and a half years, you know, we have 11 full-time employees, 25 part-time employees, a lot of, um, you know, quality control, uh, warehouse, stuffing envelopes, that type of stuff. Right. But yeah, now, hold on. I got to stop you there, Rick. You say you never looked back. Now I've, I've been an entrepreneur for a long time, but I cashed out government pensions to, to mm -hmm. get in this. There's every once in a while where the the month you know goes faster than the than the bank account, right? And you're like, <laughs> yeah. and you're going, you're like, holy yeah. moly, like I'm responsible for paying, so, I'm responsible for this, and you never looked back. No, I know what you're saying. So my background's in athletics, so I, I'm used to the grueling grind. Um, you know, good years, bad years, good months, bad months. Not gonna lie, there's been a lot of hard, terrible months. Um, yeah. But I'm so passionate about this product. I know it works. Um, I feel like I literally could sell this like 24 seven because it's just such a unique idea. Um, I used to receive handwritten notes when I was getting recruited, um, in college or recruited in high school to go to college. I kept them. I had a handwritten note sent to me from like a couple of my old NFL coaches. I keep those. So like, I just know like the power of the pen on paper works. And I'm extremely excited about, you know, the technology that we built, 
um, that it helps push back those push past those hard months because there's a ton of hard months. I mean, I'm yeah. not going to lie. Like, like you said, there's a reason most businesses fail within five years because it's terrifyingly hard. But, um, my passion for this, um, is unwavering. Um, I, my, my perseverance, you know, has been tested in the past and it's been strengthened, you know, through everything that I've gone through, but I'm really excited about this. Um, I, I really do believe this is a product that everybody, you know, that really needs to be built, you know, because we're living in a, you know, unpersonal world nowadays. Like, yeah. think about it. Like, I hate my phone now. Like, I, you know, it's too many notifications. Like, you're accessible 24 seven, right? Like, like, it's it's almost rare. I mean, it is rare to receive a handwritten note nowadays. Yeah. You know, when uh, we, we saw like text messaging, um, you know, marketing come out and then, you know, the bots that pop up on your Facebook or LinkedIn. And then we yeah. saw it like we saw all that, you know, when email came out, holy moly, the amount of cold emails came out. Mm -hmm. And it's funny that, you know, back in the day, everybody was fighting for your mailbox. I'd show up to my mailbox and there was a stack mm -hmm. of stuff. And I'm like, yeah. oh, my gosh. And now it's starting to get a, a little thin. So when yeah. I do see a, a note come through. I open it up. And even yeah. if I know that it's from like a, a bank or something like you've been pre-approved, you don't know me, right? Like I open it up. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, ah, why did I do that? Right. So it, yeah, you got me. Something to it. You got me. <laughs> yeah. You got me. And, but it, yeah. It's, it's so true. Like open rates. I I've had a cold call. I've had a door knock. I've had all those things. Success is really, really, really low, but you're saying that the, what are some of the stats on handwritten notes and are they all in envelopes like lick sealed kind of envelopes? Yeah, so we've done a, an open rate case study just mm -hmm. to prove this, yeah. um, but we sent out a print envelope and a handwritten envelope um, with a $10 check inside of it. This basically saying like, here's free money, just scan the QR code, just we're calling that we're doing a, an open rate case study. All you need to do is scan this code and here's $10. And we did confirm, um, and there's ways you have to do this, like we got, you know, a good list that we knew was deliverable. We run it through the NCOA, which is the national change of address, verify those people are still living at those addresses, you know, sent an A and B test print versus handwritten and that handwritten, um, uh, open rate QR code got scanned 99 out of a hundred that we sent. And I don't, I don't remember the, the print. I think it was like 39 or 40, which was a little high, but, um, we proved, you know, handwritten notes do have that open rate, but when it comes to stats, you know, on the marketing side, you know, we always try to tell our clients that we work with is really focus on the relationship because we all know it costs, you know, more money to retain or bring on new clients versus um, retain current clients. Um, you know, just a 5% improvement. There was an, an American express. I've been quoting this, this study, you know, for the last three months, but American Express came out as if you can just have a 5% increase in client retention, it will have a 25 to 95% um, increase in year, year over year revenue. Mm -hmm. So by just retaining 5% more than what you normally do, your revenue is going to grow 25 to 95%. And I think that was like, you know, a B2B, you know, study it wasn't like a B2C, some like apparel brand, mm -hmm. but still just retaining your clients is extremely powerful. Um, you know, if you have better relationships with your clients, like a customer service, like, and this is just goes around, like, if you like people, you're going to work with them, right? Yeah. You know, if you like them, you're going to be willing to listen and earn or, you know, maybe trust them. But um, customers who felt appreciated, again, another American Express study here, um, they're five times more likely to make repeat purchases. So your lifetime value goes up. Um, they're five times more likely to re to forgive a mistake. So product doesn't get done you miss a meeting you're late to a meeting you know they have that relationship with you they're going to be more likely to forgive you and then um i thought this one was pretty staggering as well is that 33 percent of clients who didn't have a good relationship with the company felt no loyalty and they're just going to shop right and find anybody else to work with so you know that's one third of your clients you know if you don't have a relationship with them there's no loyalty there you know they're just going to shop around so i thought that was a very I mean, that's 33% of your business, you know? So I yeah, thought that was a pretty impactful stat when I read that as well. I, I love sales. I love business. I love putting deals together, but to get a client, you know, to get a good client, right? Especially if you have a high ticket item, 
like or mm-hmm. service or product like it is it's a lot to get someone to open up their checkbook and write a twenty thousand dollar check mm-hmm. or more right like we all know like everybody listening in is like yeah that it's it's difficult right to lose that to lose someone who's willing to write a twenty thousand dollar check like is is staggering right like the the it, it is so cheaper someone said this it's cheaper to keep her right it's it is cheaper to keep the the business flowing mm-hmm. and then start adding more and then do it through referrals um so yeah. r- really brilliant i love this rick i love how you did this now let me ask this question of like you're you had this blowout month right 28k and and commissions and you're crushing it and then you're like all right family we're gonna go build a startup right yeah <laughs> what did that look like yeah so it was actually my wife's um she actually pushed me into it so um, I'm very conservative by nature. Like yeah. my investing portfolio is more conservative. Hers is more risky. That's just how we are. Um, she just saw how excited and passionate I was about it. Like that's all I could talk about. I was excited. Like I literally was just, she can feel the energy. And I was like, we had a really, you know, I was top 1% or top five rep uh, six years in a row. I just, you know, I have that competitive background. Yeah. Um, so we, we were living a pretty comfortable life and we were just starting a family. Like, <laughs> I was like, why are we taking that plunge now? But my wife, she just saw it. She, she I, I think, you know, we've been together almost 16 years, but, um, she just, I think she just was excited for me. She knew, like, she believed in me. Like she's seen me from 18 years old, me going through college, you know, my success in college, my success in the NFL, my success in medical, I think she just knew that if she gave me the support and time, I would be successful in this as well. And she has, um, you know, fast forward, you know, four and a half years, we've done millions in, in sales and we'll make Inc. 5000 this year, which I'm pretty excited about. But um, yeah, starting a business is no joke. Um, you know, a lot of people want to start a business because they want to be their own boss. And I, I, I think that's nothing more far from the truth. You're actually now working for your employees. You're working even more for your vendors, your clients, like you're even more a <laughs> hundred times more responsibility um, or they want to work less or they think they're just going to become rich overnight. Um, I, I love this quote, you know, I forget who it was, but it was like, it took me 10 years to be an over, overnight ex- success. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I totally it that. is so true. Like I, I've literally worked seven days a week, like, you know, sometimes from home, but like seven days a week for the last four years. And like, now we're finally getting to where like, I'm not having those three o'clock in the morning, like freak out sessions. Right. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it was definitely a culture shock going from a W2 employee to being responsible for W2 employees. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Heavy, heavy, heavy wears the crown on that. Um, mm. You mentioned athletics, right? In uh, NFL, like well, I'm curious, like, what was your, uh, what was your background there? Yeah. So I, me and my twin brother, we, I have a twin brother. We got football scholarships to play. Um, Who's at older? The University first of all. I am. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. yeah. So I, I think I had like over 40 offers. I was, I had a pretty good high school career, and, but then me and my twin brother, we had seven offers together. Um, cause we were going to only go like together. Yeah. So we went to the university of Arizona, uh, was a three-year starter there. Um, led the Pac-10 in multiple stat categories my junior and senior year as an outside linebacker. So I had a pretty good career. Um, then was drafted in 2011. And this is where all like the drive, hard work, perseverance, gutted out, teamwork, right? This is where all those like intangible skills were developed for two decades, which is helping me be successful now, you know, in my mid thirties. But um, yeah, was in the NFL for three years, drafted to Green Bay in 2011, had the typical journeyman career, bounced around. But um, yeah, got done. I still had that competitive itch, got in med device. You know, that it still wasn't scratched. Went back and did my MBA. Still wasn't scratched. <laughs> Started my business, right? <laughs> and uh, yeah, I feel like I'm scratching it now just because of how much software we've had to build, how much robotics we've had to build, yeah. you know, um, how much more responsibility. So plus I have kids now, so I, I feel like that competitive edge is, you know, um, it's not as important, you know, now you have other things to focus on, but yeah. Um, my athletic background for sure is what pro- has propelled me in my professional career. Having kids forces us to be smarter, right? When it comes to like our business, right? Like before mm-hmm. kids, maybe even first getting married, you still have the ability 
to push and drive really hard medical device sales or, you know, real estate sales and investments and such like that. Like I could push really hard, but when I started having kids and they, you know, like I love my, yeah. you know, putting the kids down for bed and seeing them in the morning and taking them to school. I love that. So I have to be smarter because my time just got chopped in half mm -hmm. and I can't focus on my hustle. So your technology allows people to hustle a little bit smarter. Right? Yeah. Using it's like robots. scaling your time. Right. It's like, that's the one thing I've, I, I won't say I've mastered, but I've gotten really good at in the last four years is scaling my effort and scaling my time. Um, number one is like, I'm on a pretty tight budget being self-funded. So I have to figure out a way to, to scale without having that monthly overhead scale. Cause we can always just hire people to do our work. Right. But that yeah. you have to train them. You have to hope they don't leave. Right. That costs money. But you know, I always tell everybody, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm working with them, you know, if they're an employee of ours or a client of ours, like you got to figure out a way to be more efficient in everything you do. It doesn't matter um, if it's sending emails or spending time with friends, like you got to figure it out. But for me, I've gotten really good and simply noted as just scaling my time. You know, I know how to scale my emails, my outreach, our outbound, um, our reporting, because if I had to sit there and manually do it all, like I wouldn't be able to be efficient. So, yeah. and, you know, simply noted sending handwritten notes. We, I mean, we drink our own Kool-Aid, you know, we try to retain our clients as much as possible. We're always using our tool to engage, you know, we had, last time I checked, we were, I mean, we're tens of thousands of users, you know, and we try to send out cards every quarter to them. Mm -hmm. So um, you have to figure out a way to engage even your prospects, your clients, like nonstop. And how are you doing that? Is it text? Is it email? Is it handwritten notes? Is it social? Are you picking up the phone and calling your, you know, your best 20 clients, you know, once every couple months, right? Like, how are you doing this? Right. We use call centers. I mean, I, we, I've gotten, I feel like I have an MBA on how to scale a small business because I've like figured I've had to figure it out, but yeah. Um, yeah, you have to learn how to scale everything you do. You know, you don't have the luxury of having the, you know, the corporate, I, ha I used to have a corporate American express where they would just pay for everything. Like, don't have that anymore. Like, Not my money. It's no, yeah, right yeah. in the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. I'll, I'll upgrade to the steak tonight. $3,000 doctor dinner. Oh, okay. No worries. You know? Right. Like, yeah. Now it's like a $30 cocktail. Holy yeah. moly. Like, yeah. <laughs> let's just go out for dessert or coffee. Yeah. Um, awesome. So let's go back in time. 2011, you just got drafted. You just got that thing. And uh, we had a, we had a great game, Green Bay. And, you know, back in the locker room, sitting in an ice bath. And uh, you you walk in, you're like, hey, by the way, you're gonna run a tech company one day. <laughs> what would your yeah, thought have been? And that that's a great question. So, I think this is something that can hit home with anybody listening to this who's is thinking about, you know, trying to do something. They want to go for it. They're just scared to go for it. I have no no, you know, reason to be running a, a software robotics industrial automation company. I have no experience in it. My background's in athletics and then sales. But what I do have is an insane amount of drive and passion for what I'm doing. And what I'm doing is matching what I am good at sales and marketing, you know, with my passion and drive for building this company. And, and that's what is allowing me to scale this and build this successfully. I don't know software. I don't know electrical engineering, software engineering, mechanical engineering, but what I know is like, you know, the bullets and bo the bullets and bowling balls, you know, technique is, you know, make a bunch of little error, you know, errors, you know, test shot, test shot, test shot before you throw out that big wad of cash. Right. Yeah. And that's what we've been doing month after month after month. It's test, 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 big investment, test, 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 big investment, you know, consulting, 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 pull the trigger. Right. Mm -hmm. It took us 14, they call it phase zeros. Uh, where you basically pay an, an engineering company for their opinion or a software developer for their opinion. Here's what we want. This is what we wanted to do. How would you do it? How, mu how much would it cost? Like I literally just paid, I, I mean, I paid over a hundred thousand dollars in just consulting and opinions over the last four years, but that's what I've had to do because I didn't have the background, but that's how we've been able to do it successfully. So um, if there, if there really is a will, there's a way, but um I'm just really good at, you know, my sales and marketing, you know, outbound follow-up, problem solve, provide value, maintain and build relationships, right? Stay stay in front of them. Everything I was good at in my previous career, and I just put it over here, you know, matched with, you know, that bullets, bowling balls, and test, test, test before you you pull that trigger. So um, I, I've always kind of had a tech 
like excited background as well. I love like drones and cameras. Yeah. But um this is still an insane company. This is like the probably the worst first company for any like first time entrepreneur to start, to be honest. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> like it, it's just so much development. It is just insane amounts of development. Um you know, it's just I'm I have a full stack developer, a front end developer, a web designer, an electrical engineer, a mechanical engineer, a software engineer, and somehow I got to get them all on this. It's like herding cats. Like they all have like, you know, their, their egos and they got to be stroked and, you know, you're doing great, but you need to work nice with this guy over here. And then they don't like each other. And I'm trying to get them to play nice. And it's like, listen, I'm paying both of you like for this, like stop, put your egos aside it's just like it's it's so funny and uh i have a few competitors that watch every little step i do so i'm sure they're just loving listening to this right now when they do oh, listen to this man but... <laughs> i'll tell those competitors they yeah. are experiencing the exact same thing oh i know i know so it people makes working together because we're yeah. Uh, the, the developers and graphic designers and podcasters and anybody in sort of a yeah. creative space there's there's pride of pride of creation we're creating yeah. something yeah put put two in a room oh there's going to be a little bit of a battle like everybody yeah. is going yep me too right yeah um but super cool so le you're learning you had to learn how to be mm -hmm. a tech founder ceo you had to learn how to bootstrap and fund this thing if mm -hmm. you had to guess with that question if you had to guess how much personal dollars you put into this over the years how much yeah take a guess i know exactly how much it's like you're and you wouldn't believe today. it. No, no, I'm really good. I'm telling you, I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm really good sales and marketing. I've, I've, I mean, I, I'll tell you off show, but I mean, it's not that much. <laughs> okay. Um, because I just don't want. I'm telling you, I have competitors that literally just wait for every little thing I do to see what I'm doing. But um, we're completely self-funded through sales because I know how to sell. Oh, I know I how to this. hunt down people. I know how to get in front of them. I know how to identify a problem, um, show them a solution, plant that seed. Even if they don't close within 30 days or 60 days, I'm going to get them in 90 days or 120 days. And that's happening every single day. So it just grows and grows and grows. So what's really important is knowing what you're good at, stick to your strengths and have and hire for your weaknesses, right? So I've become a really good project manager. Um, that's a really strong, like heavy muscle that I've developed. Um, I'm not a good software developer engineer at all, but I've become a really good project manager of just keeping yeah. things moving forward, you know, while really exercising, doing what I'm great at is sales and marketing. So, um, but I am extremely proud of this. I mean, it's 100% funded by clients. Um, you know, we'll do over $2 million in revenue this year. Just this year alone, we've done millions in revenue. I mean, last four years so yeah um it's pretty cool nice work thank you yeah there i know uh you guys are coming up for ink ink 5000 right mm -hmm. i awesome. mean yeah was, i'm trying to get everybody to pay their bills by the end of the year um otherwise i'm just going to show a bunch of you know open invoices and be like does this count please let this count <laughs> <laughs> we set this uh, out yeah um, yeah. yeah. So all of his clients, please pay your bills by the end of the year. Yeah. Um, so congratulations, man. It is tough as hell to build a, a startup. It is so tough to build something from nothing and, mm -hmm. uh, and you're doing it. And I love the idea. I love this. When I have a, when I have conversations with uh, startups, people who have, I have massive respect for people who have self-funded and got to a point where they're funding through clients, right? Mm -hmm. That to me is such a great way of market validation and improving that you have the ability to sell and deliver, right? Mm -hmm. I love that. Well done on that. Um, what does the future look like for you guys? Yeah. So, you know, I, I don't, I, I, when I started this company, it was really built to sell. Um, I've always, I wanted to prove that I can do it. Like, yep. you know, I had a, I had a lot of people doubt me and I'm sure a lot of people out there who are entrepreneurs, right. have the same thing on the same, same mindset, you know, chip on their shoulder. They want to prove to themselves and others wrong, prove to themselves. They can do it, prove others wrong. But, um, when I started this, I was built to sell for sure. Um, I just think in order to scale it, you know, to like a hundred million dollar company, like that's yeah. just either going to take funding, which I don't want to do, or it's going to take like 30 years. And, 
I just, with all these skills that I've developed and all this knowledge over the last four years, I've just, I know how I can now apply it to other more successful ventures. Yeah. But I still think, you know, we're in this for another three or four years. I'm definitely going to sell it. We, we've had a few people reach out like private equity. Yeah. Um, but it's really funny when you start getting some accolades, you know, people who never wanted to listen to you, talk to you, you know, years ago. Now they're like coming out of the woodworks. So um it feels yeah, so really good when that happens, right? If you get a bunch of no's, 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 and then yeah. someone is then reaching out to you, it feels so good. Like, man, I, I did it. Such a good, you know, I was rejected and now they're asking me. Yeah. How do well, you the keep thing your is, ego in check? Yeah, it's like, it does, but they're still like super, disre like they are still super disrespectful. Like they still try to undervalue you because they know you're still young and like not a big, you know, tenured you know, mature company, like they know you're still like up and down and developing and stuff. So they're like, Oh, we're interested in buying your company. And then you go through the steps of just seeing like, well, I'll, you know, I'll entertain it. <laughs> yeah. They just give you some low ball offer. Yeah. You know, it's just like, Oh, still another slap. I'll, you don't know how much you just maybe want to work even harder to grow this. Thank you for the motivation for the next, you know, year. <laughs> so absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Man, so many questions to ask you. Um, when when you're building this, right, um, you've had to step into many different roles and and grow this out. Number one, what was your first robot's name? Uh, so we call him like the Terminator, T one, T two, T three. So, um, yeah, yeah. So we called them T one, T two, T three, T four, T five, T six. You know, all that, the way to seventy five. Just... <laughs> yeah. Okay, you don't have yeah. to name them all for me. I could, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, all right. So the Terminator was your was your first. Um, how many uh, handwritten notes can T one write per day? So we just it has a cycle counter on it. I think we just looked at it. it was at like that, that just one machine was at like eight hundred thousand cycles. But um, each machine, it really just depends um, on like the content, you know, on the letter, because it, it does write every single letter, you know, it can do anywhere from like 200 to 400 notes a day. That's notes and envelopes, um, at, like a 45 to an 85 word message on average. But um, yeah, the, the real, the real pain in the butt to scale this is Number one, it's mechanical robots. And then it's, you know, 200 notes a day per robot. That's not that much. So it's like, man, if we're really going to, you know, do 10,000 notes a day, 20,000 notes a day, 50,000 notes a day, you're going to need tons and tons of these robots. And that's what we're scaling to right now, um, especially during the holidays. You know, right now we're in November. We do about 40% of our revenue in November, December. Yep. And like, that's when we get the surge of business, which is great. You know, it's, it's the best time of the year, but um this isn't like any other like software, you know, or, um, you know, even like apparel company where you can just buy everything in bulk, you know, yeah. at, in December and let it sit for a year, you know, for us to do that, it would take tens, 30,000 square feet of office for us to wait to scale to when we need 300 machines, you know, over the next five years. Mm -hmm. So it's an incredibly complicated business to, to scale. You know, it's a lot of industrial automation, how is software communicating with robots, how is software communicating with our printing press and our Duplo and our, you know, production team and then our quality control team and setting up all these flows. Um, so, um, but yeah, each robot can do about 200, but the, the name of the game here is, is scaling your robots and figuring an efficient way to work with them yeah. reliably. Yeah. Super cool, man. Super cool. When you walk in the room of seeing all these robots, like, what a, what a, what a, what a production, right? You get to see them all writing and moving. Like, I, I can't wait to see the video. Cause I, I bet it's, it's really cool to see And I'm imagining them, you know, like T 1000s or T 100s actually mm -hmm. doing it. Um, as you're, as you're going through this and you know, you have kids, like, what do your kids think you do? They think that I, uh, my wife said that I help people send letters to, to Santa Claus. <laughs> she just said that recently, <laughs> oh, but my so kids true. are three and five. So, um, actually when they think of work, they think of popsicles. Cause we have like a, like a kitchen here and they come here and they get a popsicle. So anytime they come to my office, they're more just interested about like the popsicles in the freezer, what color they're going to get and what snacks are in the kitchen that they can sit down and watch TV. But 
that is one one thing I am extremely excited about is as they get older, you know, I have all these, you know, skills that I could be able to help them with, you know, here's everything I went through and here's how we did it. And here's the company we built. And, um, you know, and that's not too far down the line. So for deal makers, let's give some tips on deals. Yeah. Right? What kind of industries does this work really, really well for? If you had to look at all the industries, you're like, man, this is the industry that they're missing it. Yeah. You really dove in just so, to do it. So what you just said earlier was high ticket item sales and relationship based sales. So if you're thinking of a high ticket item, um, how are you competing with everybody else selling that same high ticket item? You know, are you that person spamming them on LinkedIn, that person annoying them with a phone call? Um, are you that person that's engaging them in a more professional way? Are you walking in, trying to set up an appointment? You know, if you can't do those things, how are you setting yourself up differently? And then how are you following up? You know, what does that sales cycle look like? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are incredibly lazy. Um, yeah. It helps us because, you know, they can use us. But, you know, if you even if you just sit down and send one handwritten note a day yourself, like don't use our service for that. You know, our service is great for like scaling or automating. But in those high ticket item sales, it's just incredibly a powerful tool to be more personal because like you said earlier, it's a, people hold on to their money. It's a, it's a very personal thing. You know, budgets are a very personal thing. So that person that they're going to give their money to, they have to you appreciate, they're going to have to believe in, and how are you going to get them to believe in you? So we think relationships and developing those strong bulletproof relationships are the right way to, to develop those, those uh, relationships and those long sales cycles. And then in relationship, you know, based industries like real estate, mortgage, insurance, like you're literally not even a, a penny, a dozen, like everybody, it's literally illegal to offer, you know, a different type of, you know, I was talking to an insurance person, like they all legally have to sell the, the same type of like insurance. Like if you're brokering the same insurance, you have to offer the same insurance. So how are you going to differentiate yourself? Um, you know, yeah. so we always say relationships and how are you going to scale those relationships? Yeah. And then, you know, I gave that example earlier. It's a great prospecting tool, 99% open rate. Nobody's competing in the mail. Um, if your client's worth more than, if you're going to make $500 or more off your clients, it's the ROI. We have a cool ROI calculator on our website that you can visit and use. It's just the ROI is like not even, it's insane. Um, if you, if your product you know, something they need. So we think, uh, you know, high ticket sales for sure. And then absolutely the relationship based industries um, yeah. are the, the perfect ways to, to use this product. So good. So good for the actual message. Let's get like a little bit in the weeds on this. Cause you've sent out mm -hmm. hey, since day one, how many handwritten millions? I, last time we checked was last year. Um, we actually sent our 1 millionth note to my professor in yeah. college because for the we basically like thanked him for the idea um but yeah i i would have to think we're over two million now for sure wow super cool yeah. man good job yeah um out of all those like what kind of message works really well and what kind of message doesn't for prospecting let's first so prospecting. prospecting it's it's you know introduction call to action make an ask it's my my sales background is don't TLDR them, don't too long, don't read or didn't read, right? Like it drives me absolutely nuts when people yeah. try to email me and say, hey, I need this message. It's 130 words long. I'm like, do you really think that that person's going to sit down and read these three paragraphs? No, they're not. It's like, you got to hook them, right? You have to hook them. What's going to get them excited immediately to, you know, to do something. So, you know, introduction, you know, who you are, where you're from, call to action. You know, this is what I can do. This is how I can help you, you know, make an ass. Can we sit up a five minute phone call? Can we grab lunch? Right. You know, give them something to respond to. Right. So um, give them just a little bit of information to pique their interest, to hook them, to want to learn more. So they call you. It's these people. I mean, these, I get it still four years. Like here's my essay can you write it? I'm like, we can, but I'm telling you, it won't work. Yeah. <laughs> it just won't work. Like, who's going to believe you sat down and wrote the 300 <laughs> words? It's just, right? it's like <laughs> common sense. But yeah, short and sweet, get to the point, respect their time, especially if they're not expecting it, right? Think about, put yourself in their shoes. Like, would yeah. you want to open up a letter and read 
some sales pitch from some person you don't know or barely know, right? And it's that long. Like, I don't, I think it's common sense. You try to, you know, but I guess it's not, but yeah, short, sweet, to the point. Like, yeah, the purpose sure. of this is to get a meeting. The purpose of mm -hmm. this is to get a phone call, to get a follow up meeting, yeah. to get a small little ask. You're not asking for the moon, right? Make a small little ask and get the, yeah. that's the purpose of this, right? Yeah. 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 It's just like, just, yeah. So when I, when I was in my medical device um, sales, when I literally, the, all I said was, my name is Rick. This is from this, uh, my name is Rick from this company. Right now, if you work with us, you can get this piece of capital equipment for free. If you're interested, can we book a, a lunch? That's it. That was literally it. And it literally was fire. It was just like, it was amazing. Like doctors loved it. So it's just like three, four sentences. Like think about it, you know? Yeah. So yeah, oh, awesome. make an introduction, awesome. call to action, make an ass. That's introduction, call to action, make an ass. So in this, I got a, a, a deck with some questions to kind of like, spice things up and then also just yeah. a curveball in here. So tell me when to stop. Yeah. I'm going to ask you one of these questions. Stop. All right. So the question is, Ooh, if someone won an award, so Josh, you know, we, we have our, we have our few businesses and let's just say one of our businesses wins this huge award. Thanks mm -hmm. to you. Right. Uh, what would people most likely thank you for their speech if they ever won an, an award? intense amount of commitment if somebody works with us we just we try to give them 10 times more than what they pay for it's just you have to do it in today's day and age guys anybody listening to this like no one i mean you all can be a little bit unique but there's always an alternative to what you're doing so you have to get that person you're working with so committed and loyal and bought into you um, and how do you do that is just over deliver over deliver over deliver, be obsessed about it. Um, and let and make sure they know that you're obsessed about it. Um, if they know you have their best intentions in mind, it's going to pay dividends to your career in the long run, for sure. Super cool. During this interview, um, we'll, we'll get to like how people could connect with you, but there's probably a question like, and I, I, I completely screwed up and did not ask you besides saying your name wrong in the beginning, like what question should I've asked you during this interview? Um, I, I don't know. I think we kind of covered everything from my background to athletics to highlight of the robot to, yeah, I mean, that's kind of it, you know, so um, we, at the end of the day, what simply noted is, is we help people scale and automate, you know, their handwritten notes, you know, relationship building, prospecting, um, you know, increase engagement rates, right? So, I mean, that's really what the mission is, is I'm out to try to share the story um, because this is a really cool niche service and product. Um, there really, there are some people out there trying to do something similar, but we've just been extremely dedicated to making sure that we've built the, the best solution. Um, that looks the best because you just don't want to be known as the guy who sends a fake, fake handwritten note, you know, yeah. like, because these pen plotters out there, they just the restrictions, you can just see it. There's too many similarities and we've, we knew that. So we had to build something that wouldn't do that. Like too many patterns in that old stuff, too many similarities, too many font restrictions. So we had, we had no choice, but to go the route and build our own robot. Super cool. So with that, uh, where can people go to connect with you and do a deal? Yeah. Well, I'm, uh, I'm on LinkedIn basically all day. Um, it's like my number one social channel. So if you just go to LinkedIn and look up Rick Elmore, um, or simply noted, you can find me there. Or just go to simplynoted.com is just how it's spelled. Um, and if you want, we send a really nice handwriting sample kit. If this is a video, you can kind of see it. We put this really big sample kit together with a bunch of writing samples and flyers and everything in it. And we'll send you that for free. Just go to simplynoted.com and go to the business page and just let us know where to ship it. And we always get good feedback on it. I think like over three years, I've or over four years, I've had three people like saying it was okay. <laughs> I was just like, okay, hard person uh, to please. But yeah. yeah, and we've sent out, I mean, just this year, 4,000 of them. So, I mean. Awesome, man. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, as always, reach out to our guests and say thanks. Um, my request to you is that you, you know, reach out to our guests and say, hey, what you said was valuable. Here's how. 
right? Or reach out mm-hmm. to them and say, hey, give me that free sample. I'd like to take a look at that to see how this applies to my business. Now, if you have a, and all their contact information, by the way, will be in the show notes. So connect with them directly, or you can reach out and say, hey, Josh, will you connect me with so-and-so and, I'll, and I'm happy to make that introduction. Um, but if you have a deal that you'd like to talk about here on the Deal Scout, head over to thedealscout.com. We love talking about deals, the technologies and the tools used by you know great deal makers and uh, certain deals that we might be interested. So if you have a deal you'd like to talk about here on the show, thedealscout.com, fill out a quick form, maybe get you on the show next. Till then, we'll talk to you on the next episode. Bye, everybody.